Okay, to get started, just click on that little question mark and we are going to do the creating Pong tutorial. So the first step is to choose a background. So it says to click this little button. So I click it over here and I will find a good background. You want one that's not too busy for this project and I'm gonna choose the underwater theme. Okay, so now that we've done that, click next and it says to choose a ball. So you need to choose a sprite, click that little icon over there and then you can use anything that looks like a ball. Let's see what I wanna choose. I think I'll choose an apple because I'm a teacher. Okay, so now I have that sprite in there. So, oh, why are characters in Scratch called sprites? We borrowed the word from the first video games. I didn't know that. Okay, so now I wanna delete the cat. So I usually just right click on the cat and then I press the delete button, or you can also go up to the top here and choose a scissor, click on the cat and boom, it is gone. All right, so that's what we just did. And as I said, we could also right click. That's what I usually do. Okay, next step is to make the ball move. So in order to make the ball move, it's a motion type script and everything is color coded in Scratch to make it really, really easy. So in the motion category, I am going to choose to move 10 steps. And so I'm making my apple now move 10 steps. And the next step says, well, we want to keep it going. We want to keep it going if it hits an edge. So go ahead and pull in that if on edge, just make it bounce. And we wanna do that forever. We wanna keep repeating it. So that's a control type structure. Anything repeating would be in the controls. So that's what I did right there. The next step is to make it starting by pointing in some direction. So I'm going to just have it point in direction 45. So that starts it at a 45 degree angle. And the next thing is that we want this to happen when the green flag is clicked. The green flag is clicked and that would be like pressing play on any game. If we want the ball to move a little bit faster, we might make it move 15 steps, even faster. You could do 20 steps, slower, just make it less. Okay, so the next step is to choose a paddle so that we can start to actually play Pong. So add another sprite and then pick something for your paddle. So you can just use the paddle there or I'm going to just use the magic wand because it looks cooler. Okay, so I just put it in and I can just move it around anywhere I want. And then it says that we can make it grow or make it shrink. So click that button and just click on it, click on it, click on it, and it grows. And if I want to make it a little smaller, just click on it and it gets a little smaller. And so now that we have that set up, so let's go ahead and control the paddle. So the first thing we want to do is when the green flag is clicked, that's when we press the play button, remember? We want to forever, we want it to follow our um, mouse pointer. So wherever our mouse pointer is, is where that paddle should be. So that's what we've just done. Now bounce off the paddle. So when the ball, so this is, we're programming the ball, go back to the ball's sprite. So the next thing we want to do is to have this apple bounce off of the paddle, or if you have a ball there. So whenever that um, apple hits that magic wand, we want it to bounce off. So when that green flag is clicked forever, because this is gonna be constantly happening. So if our apple, if it touches that magic wand, so touching, touching the magic wand, if it touches the magic wand, then we want it to bounce off. So we can just have it like turn a certain number of degrees. So let's have it turn 180 degrees will work perfectly for this. Make it just wait like one second or something to have it pause for a second, okay? So the next thing we wanna do here is we want to add a sound. So whenever it hits the paddle, we want it to make a sound. So you just click on the sounds tab and then to bring a new sound in, you just click on this little button here, choose the sound from the library and I'm gonna just choose this zoop thing. Okay, so now it's in there. So again, we want to 
go back to the script for the apple and whenever it touches that petal I want to play a sound so that's all I do drag it in okay the next thing we want to do is add a challenge so basically you know you can't let it hit the floor right so we can't say when it hits the floor but we can say when it like hits a certain color so what we're going to do is we're going to change the background so that the bottom of my scene has a color associated with it. So you just click on your stage and then you would click on the backdrops. I don't know why my mouse wasn't working there, but click on the backdrops. Oh, I'm going to just delete that first one. Okay, so now that's my backdrop and I'm going to put a line at the bottom. I'm going to put a red line. I'm going to make it real thick. Okay, so here we go. You can press the shift key while you're dragging that. So that would create a straight line. And that's that little tip. Just hold down the shift key. And well, something that's wrong with mine is that my apple is actually red. So I need this background to be, or this bottom to be a different color. Because I'm going to say when the red thing hits the yellow thing. Whenever the apple hits that yellow thing, my game is over. I just died. Okay, so now I need to program the apple. So go back to the apple script and I just right click to copy my block because it's going to be the same kind of structure and I want to say forever if that apple is touching that yellow so I just click on touching color and I click on the yellow bottom there okay so if it's touching yellow then I died so I need to stop everything so let me just drag all this old stuff out and I go back to my controls and I want to stop everything if that apple hits that yellow bar at the bottom and that's my challenge okay so now the next thing to do is just to enhance it a little bit um i want to add effects maybe so maybe on my apple whenever it uh hits that paddle i will have it change the color effect so that's just going to make it look like colorful um and then i might want a starting position and this is really good for programming in general you want to have some initialization somewhere to start so i might want to start the apple maybe at the top of the screen so you see that my cursor right here and you'll see it changes um where that circle where i just circled at the bottom my coordinates are about 0 175 ish at the top middle there so i'm going to say when the green flag is clicked go to 0 175 so that will initialize my apple at the top of the screen when i press play and then you might want a score variable so click on data and then make a variable call it score okay and you'll see that it creates a score right here at the top left of my screen and what do I want to do so at the beginning I want to set the score to zero I start the game it's zero but whenever it touches that magic wand I just got a point I got a positive point but if I hit the bottom yellow, I should die, and I could change my score by negative one. Maybe I don't want to die. You can add that. Um, okay, so now let's see what our game looks like. I press the green flag, and you'll see that the magic wand just follows my mouse around, and that's your first step if you did that good job but I find it pretty easy to play the game this way and so you might want to add on to your game a little bit perhaps you'll want to um, trigger things with the arrow keys so make the paddle move with your left and right arrow so you'll see that you have in the events you can say when the left arrow key is pressed maybe you want to move uh, negative 10 steps because you want it to go left 10 steps and then let's duplicate that and say well when the right arrow is pressed let's just move positive 10 steps okay let's just leave it there oh let's do some initialization for this wand let's also put it in the middle bottom Hmm, where should it be? Around, let's move it around. See, I'm looking at the coordinates over there in the circle spot. So when the green flag is clicked, let's go ahead, go to zero, comma, negative 150. That should be a good spot for it. And then I'm just going to, I'll just leave it on the side over there because that was my old script. Now let's press the green arrow and see what happens. Oh my gosh. It's way too slow. I'm not moving this paddle fast enough, so I need to speed this up. So to speed it up, I would just move like 20 steps in each direction. Now, use the left and right arrow. Hmm, still kind of slow, so maybe I need to speed it up even more. 
go by 100. Let's try again. Boom, now I can play my game, okay? And that looks a lot better. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this and you can keep customizing and adding on. I hope you had fun coding today.